Well, good morning. It's another dreary rainy day. So we've got another inside project. Sorry for the poor lighting. We're working on solar batteries today. So these two, oh, I can't point like that. Hang on. These two were in here. I bought the motor home with them. This was my starter battery and they sent this along as a house battery. I'm going to connect them both because I got the room both for the starter batteries and I just picked up these two 6 volt deep cycle batteries and I'm going to use them as my house battery. So to give you an idea, this one here was 100 amp hours. This together is 260 amp hours. Each one is 260 but there's 6 volt. Putting them together I'll get 12 volt 260 amp hours. In our house I have 8 of these so it works good. I have a bunch of different stuff, solar charger to install, a bunch of different fuses, uh, wires to run from the roof down. I'm gonna mount the panels up on the roof here and I gotta run the wires somewhere down inside and across the charge controller I'm gonna put inside this cabinet which is directly behind here. And there's already a pre-existing hole right there which should make installation that much simpler. Our planned panel placement, we're going to put two panels here, they're 100 watt panels. This antenna is coming off, if you remember from a past video, we're putting the Starlink satellite up here on the roof, permanently mounted. If you haven't seen that video, hopefully it'll be linked up here or here and you can take a look. We are going to mount two more panels behind the Starlink, one and two. That allows us, gives us a total of 400 watts and gives us loads of room over here. Down the road we could expand if we wanted, but I think this should be enough for our needs. So all of it will be tucked in here, hopefully giving us enough life. Where's the best lighting? I'm running a lantern here. Not the best, but I got everything unhooked at the moment. So this should give us enough to do everything we need to do. And that consists of lights, furnace fan, uh, oven fan, that's basically it. The fridge runs on propane very efficiently. Uh, I will run on 120 volts as well, but at this point I'm not planning on putting an inverter in other than what we have here. So we'll use it for charging laptops, stuff like that. Also planning on installing this outdoor light because there isn't one. Hoping to mount that somewhere over here and then with a switch somewhere in here. Maybe add it to these two. These two are for the lights in the house here. Maybe we can add one more for outside. Possibly. And since it's pouring rain outside, anyway, got nothing else to do. So, hope you enjoy. All right, got Wes climbing up here. I'm gonna pass him some of these solar panels. They're a wee bit awkward, not very heavy, but don't know if I can film this. We're going to try. Got it. All right, so two of them go that way. And two go the other way. I need four, but this will help us just to get measures. Where'd he go? There he is. Okay, something like that. Two panels. One looks different because it's got brackets on it, but it's all good. We're gonna get our own brackets up here. So two panels there, like I said, two are going over here. What I need to do, you see the connector on the end of there? That's the proper connector and wire. And this is what's on these panels. So, there's a guy locally here who does solar stuff. I'm going to get them to switch those wires and make me long enough ones to make it from these two panels over to here somewhere and those panels over to here somewhere where I'm going to use a branch connector to connect all four and then run the wires down through here, through the cabinet, inside and over to where the batteries are. Okay, pardon the noise. It's, uh, I got the furnace runner which is right beside you, right here. You see that? That's the furnace. And I got the motor running to fill the battery up. So, here is where I'm going to mount this because it's an out of the way spot. And this is my battery box. I don't know if I can back up. Battery box is right here. There's a pre existing hole. I'm going to have to make a bigger one, but anyway, 
right from there I can get at the battery so it's a convenient spot and it's out of the way where it won't get bumped or hurt so I've got it mounted on the wall and we got to get hooking up some stuff so you can see here uh, if you can make that out PV so that's for my solar panels okay the positive and then here's an alternator so we're gonna get this all hooked up try to and uh, then I'll show it to you all later it's kind of hard to hold the camera here and show you at the same time so but I'll get it all hooked up there's also some more options here uh, you see that there or not there's some plugs there and that's mostly for sensor equipment so I do have a uh, uh, display that's going to be going up in the motorhome that will let me know the current and state of charge just the health of the batteries how much how much uh, the solar panels are doing that kind of thing That'll be going up there. I believe this is also Bluetooth ready. I gotta look that up again. So I should be able to access it on my phone as well. And uh, yeah, it's supposed to be a good little unit. We're only putting 400 watts on here. Um, I could go as much as probably 600 watts. Uh, yeah, I don't think I'd go much more than that though. Uh, not with this little guy. There's bigger ones available, but for what we're doing, I think 400 is gonna be lots of power just to keep the batteries topped up. And then we still have the alternator on the uh, motorhome itself that'll help charge this. And we also have the generator in the back. Or if we're plugged in, if you're at a campground and you're plugged in, then that'll also charge it. So I think we'll be lots here. Lots of physical contortions later, and this is where we're at. So I got these two batteries in there. Still dealing with my lantern, which is kind of blinding. These two batteries are hooked up. So if you're not familiar with this, this is two six volt batteries. Try to hold that there. That's a six volt and a six volt. If you hook them up positive and negative, which I've got with this guy, so that's a negative, this is a positive, hooked together, that would make this positive and this negative now a 12 volt battery. So now I have 260 amp hours of use out of a 12 volt battery here, connected together. I've got it fused here, and then this runs through to the other side to the charge controller. This one over here is the negative going from the house battery to the charge controller and that's the positive going to the charge controller. Maybe if I back up, hey, that might help out. This one over here is the starter battery hooked up. Now it looks like a great big mess of stuff in here, but that's because I got two starter batteries and two house batteries. These have obviously a lot less amp hours. This will be more than enough to run everything that we need, but they are interconnected through the charger so that when these batteries are full, it'll sense it, the charger will know that the alternator has filled these and then it'll kick over to help fill these. So you always have starting capacity, which is nice. And at nighttime now, when I shut it off, I won't be draining my house bat or my starter batteries. I will only be draining my house batteries, which is also very nice. I'll show you down underneath now. So the space didn't get any better. It's still pretty cramped. But I've got this hooked up. I didn't put the covers back on yet because I still got to do my solar panels. I did not get them hooked up. But the negative for the solar panel will hook up here and the positive for the solar panel will hook up there. Other than that, I've got everything running. You can see the lights running. So here it's indicating that we're getting charged from the alternator currently to the house batteries. Okay, this is for red for flooded battery, which is what I have. But if you have lithium or something else, you can toggle through. There's a switch on the side here that will allow you to toggle to a different battery type. There's also a sensor here. This is a temperature sensor. That wire runs back to the batteries. And I've got it taped right here to the top of the battery. That'll check the temperature and feed back to the charger again, which is supposed to give you optimal charging. So the only thing I got left now is to mount the solar panels. I'm not gonna get around to that today, but maybe tomorrow. And I will run those wires down yet somehow and into here. And then we should be good. The time has come. We are working on pulling the dishy cable through. I've got it taped. This is the old uh, TV antenna cable. It runs up through a hole in the styrofoam. Wes is going to try pulling that up. I don't know how much success we're going to have. We're going to try it though. I'm hoping it's going to work. Wes is pulling. My issue is I don't think it's going to fit through there. All right, I'm going to put this down. Okay, success. Now the other problem we have, I took this all off, but now 
we can see up there there's Gussie so that's a bit of an issue I will show you from up top that's what we're looking at up here the old piece did not come off very nice I was hoping to leave part of it because it could have sat inside this box but um, we couldn't get it apart it was too tall and we couldn't get it apart and in the efforts of getting it off here they had it so glued on here so we're going to try to repair this with a hunk of plastic glue it really good down here so it's waterproof and then we're going to set this box over and we're going to glue it as well so it'll be totally sealed and no water gets in but right now it definitely doesn't look good on the roof there's a big gaping hole all right so we've prepped the hole we've sanded all the way around got all the old caulking off the cord is through here you show me that wes I've got this plate here all sanded, ready to go. Except I sanded the wrong side. So now I need to sand this side. That was silly, I put this guy in backwards. In any case, this is gonna go on. And the Starlink cable is gonna go through that hole. So we can get it all nice and tight. That's gonna fit on here. And this is a perfect fit for inside the box. We'll caulk this guy in real good. And then we're gonna put the box on top, hook the wires up, and we should have Starlink. Okay, so we've got the cable through. We've got loads of caulking underneath there, beads of it. Oh. Is it hold? Nope, is not it close enough to the edge, I guess. Are we not close enough, far enough up? Well, it should be good there, yeah. Just don't tight, over tighten it. These roofs aren't exactly super thick. Can't over tighten there, Gus. Now this tool is highly recommended for your Starlink install. It's actually for castrating cattle. But since I need to get this guy around, this guy, I think it's gonna work. So the way we castrate the cattle, you take a little elastic like that, and this guy, spreads it so that you can get it around the cow's calf's testicles in this case Starlink and then it's good now we can pull the cable up try not to turn it or the caulking is not set yet right so you going in yeah. get her down as far as you can Good. Then we gotta slip this nut on. Now this is gonna be a tricky part because we can't really tighten it very easily. Because the nut down there will spin. Is it holding good? Mm -hmm. Not too bad. I'm gonna try to hold it for you. It's a yeah, not too good though. I don't think we're gonna get a lot of water in there. We cranked it tight. Maybe we'll go a little tighter yet, but I had to manufacture the top of this nut so it doesn't squeeze quite as well as it once did. Should be good. We'll put caulking around there as well. And now we're getting ready to put Starlink on. So we're gonna have multiple layers of water protection here, of course, because we're gonna caulk around this guy as well. So no water should get in if any water gets into this box. And then, of course, all this next layers of water, uh, of, uh, caulking should keep the water from getting inside another update okay so the hole we originally drilled you can look in the past video check up here for a link or here or down in the description or just go to our YouTube uh, list of videos and find it for the Starlink we did not want to cut this all off so we just drilled a hole and that hole right there is the right dimensions we mentioned it in that video to disconnect this guy so this leg no longer moves and that allows us to flat mount it I've got this wiring in here. I built a new collar to go around here to hold the wires in. I taped it all in, plus pulled the wire back here to help hold it all in. What we don't want is while we're vibrating driving down the road for it to get disconnected, because it would be a real pain to hook it back up. We've got this plate all in here. This guy's all cocked in. 
we're ready to go. We're gonna put some caulking around the edges of this box. I guess I'm pointing and not showing. Caulking around the edges of this box, set it down, then caulk all the way around it. And then we're gonna be screwing brackets to it yet as well. I don't know if we'll get to that tonight, but um, maybe. Okay, to be perfectly honest, I uh, did a lot of research and this is supposed to work really, really well. We're using double-sided tape to stick down some brackets on the roof to hold up the solar panels. But I have to admit, I was a little bit skeptical. I mean, it's tape, two-sided tape. Uh, so I just stuck my first bracket down. You're driving down the road at 100 and some odd kilometers an hour. You do not want these ripping off and flying through somebody's windshield. That would be horrible. This one I just stuck down and I am pulling on that as hard as I can. Oops, I did get it off, but I had to pull pretty hard to get it off. So maybe my skepticism is right, but I had yanked on there really hard before I turned the camera on. I'm actually really surprised and it's a cold day. The metal's cold, it'll all stick a little better when it's warm too. So anyway, we're gonna stick six of them on, these snow five on each panel. And uh, the other thing I'm going to do is try to scuff up the bottoms of these right here. I hadn't done that yet, and they have a better hold then. It's pretty shiny material. They do say scuffing it up helps, so we'll do that yet too. Okay, I got three of the panels up. I ran out of the VHB tape. So, for the record, they use that tape to hold windows in skyscrapers. So, I mean, it's incredibly strong. And I've watched a lot of videos where guys use a single strip of that uh, to hold it up. So, I ended up doubling up on all the brackets I've got five brackets per panel and two strips of VHB tape on each one one on the front one bracket can't really see it there on the front of each one and then two on each side and then they're screwed in really good uh, so I only had three I ran out of VHB tape originally I was only gonna do one strip so I would have had more than enough to do the last panel but uh, at least we got 300 watts up here now I'll have to order more of that tape and finish it off I've also got the uh, Starlink up here, bolted down. Now it's, it was already stuck, it's glued down in there, but we threw brackets on the front, just extra. Uh, and now gonna connect this wire. So I've got them connected. I've got a four to one branch connector here. Two of them, I guess, one for the positive, one for the negative side. And these are really dinky wires. I ordered some thicker ones like that. And I'll have to put them on at a later date, but for now at least, this is what it came with, these panels, and I've been using them like that for a long time, so I mean, it'll, it'll work. They're just really small. So I needed a connector, or a uh, jumper, I've got that here, to make this a little longer, and then I gotta make that third or fourth panel yet at a later date. But, at least it'll work, and we're gonna have some solar power, it'll be good. Gonna cry when you're gone. 